The sun, one of the greatest wonders of the world. We rely on it as a friendly neighbor to light our world, and thus we sometimes forget what a raging nuclear fusion-based inferno it actually is. In late September 2013, part of a 200,000 kilometer long filament that recently ripped through the sun's corona, burning at a heat up to 1,800,000 degrees Fahrenheit, leaving behind what looks like a glowing canyon. The sun provides us the energy that is essential to life on Earth. In fact, the sun provides us 10,000 times more energy than we use, but solar flares and coronal mass ejections are also a constant threat. The Carrington event of 1859 set telegraph offices on fire and brought the northern lights aglow down to Cuba and Hawaii. If repeated today, this might wipe out the world's electrical grid, cause aircraft to fail, and wipe out our satellites. the Kessler syndrome and he back in the 60s and 70s said if we don't take care and stop using explosive bolts and leaving fuel in rockets that can explode uh, over time this debris is going to build up and at a certain point it will reach where it will just cascade and create more and more debris and basically go out of control and deny us access to space. Swarms of debris in low Earth and polar orbits now threaten weather and communication satellite constellations, as well as the International Space Station, the Hubble Telescope, and even the new James Webb Telescope that promises to let us see back to the beginning of time. What's called the Kessler Syndrome is really nothing more than the way nature operates with orbits that cross one another. And uh, they'll eventually collide with one another. They'll create smaller debris and a certain amount of larger debris. And then that larger debris can go on and cascade to create even more debris. And you can get a runaway cascading effect. When that's applied to low Earth orbit, uh, that phenomena is taking place right now, but at a very slow rate. At about once every 10 years, we're seeing a collision between large objects and then but that rate will increase even if we don't add any new objects to Earth orbit. Asteroid impacts are tremendous events and once you have a, a good solid orbit on them you can predict a hundred years ahead of time whether there is a likelihood of an impact with the Earth. There are an estimated 500,000 to a million asteroids that are 30 meters or larger in size. At 30 meters, these are potential city killers. We now know that a five kilometer wide asteroid crashed into Earth 65 million years ago, and the residue rose up and blotted out the sun, and it killed off the dinosaurs and two thirds of all species in the world's worst mass extinction event. The proof is still with us in the crater that we can still see today on the coast of Mexico. A bus-sized asteroid swept by Earth on May 2, 2014. It was detected only three days earlier. It had the kinetic energy of a nuclear bomb. If they hit Earth, bad things can happen. And so for example, the asteroid that hit in Tunguska in 1908 was about 40 meters across. Okay, and that caused an area of devastation roughly the size of the San Francisco Bay Area. There's a million or so objects whose orbits cross Earth's orbit. And we currently know of about 10,000 of them. Our project, called Sentinel, is to launch a telescope, a space telescope, to catalog and track and make this map of all the asteroids in the inner part of the solar system. Today, new research is trying to develop innovative technology that can allow us to remove the largest debris elements. This same technology may allow us to start on-orbit servicing 
to make very expensive satellites live longer. Looking at the Earth um, from space, you realize what a precious place this is. You realize that we have a responsibility to, to continue safe operations on board Spaceship Earth. And that means protecting humanity.